Welcome everyone to this keynote, uh, everyone here in the room, thank you for coming, everyone outside at home watching perhaps from on the road. Um, as you can imagine, the fact that we have two very similar names uh, sometimes leads to confusion. We have had uh, several strange encounters in the past where people thought that we were the same person just with a typo. Let this today be proof that we're actually two different people uh, and we're happy to present this keynote here today. Uh, as for the content, we have brought for you eight important statements regarding EVPG, and I would like to jump right in with the first statement. And that statement is that one of EVPG's truly groundbreaking aspects is that it enables peer-to-peer -peer transfers of electronic securities. Now, what does that mean and how does that work? Well, as you sure know, in the German Securities Act, especially for the crypto security, you have this new entity of the registrar here at the top, a regulated entity that needs a Baffin license, and they can run a crypto register and on that register create this crypto security. And they need to perform some sort of identification, a KYC process for anyone who intends to act or to hold on, uh, to hold any sort of security in this register. And then what happens is that these two, in this case, uh, perhaps holders, investors, whatever you want to call them, they can do peer-to-peer -peer transfers by interacting directly with that crypto security. So here you have a truly peer-to-peer -peer transfer of a crypto security just from the interaction with that smart contract that represents the crypto security. And the important thing to notice is that the registrar at all times has a clear accountability for what goes on in this register. So uh, the fact that the smart contracts which constitute the register and that represent the electronic security, that they encapsulate automated business logic, so to speak, of the registrar, that is what enables the peer-to-peer -peer interaction between different holders, and, but with a clear accountability of the registrar at all times. So this being statement number one, the truly groundbreaking aspect of the, uh, for electronic securities, especially crypto securities, let's move on to important statement number two. Number two being for us the true efficiency gains based on electronic securities will not come from digitizing some of the process steps, but from breaking up silos across the entire value chain of capital markets. What do I mean with that? Well, if we look at a typical service that we use, we can think of it as existing in three sort of layers here. You have the, the service or access layer, so this is the client-facing layer. You have some logic and data in the second layer, and you have the truth, the, the settlement layer, where the asset actually lives and where it's stated uh, how it's been settled. And now, in today's world, um, any interaction between people interacting with different kinds of services would look like this, right? You have something like a fintech app, perhaps, or a banking app, and th those both have backends that, in some cases, can go all the way to the bottom where you have a uh, reach into the settlement layer. But if you look at a custodian or at a CSD even, it is impossible to have some sort of direct interaction with the outside world. And you have this chain here of apps going from a backend to the API of the other service. And we all perhaps know uh, of chain of custody and all these kinds of things. So there's a lot of inefficiency here from all these siloed backends over here. So you see again here on the right hand side of the slide that there's no direct access for some users to some of the services, the data and the logic are stored in siloed backends, and these assets, wherever they are stored and where they've been settled, they cannot leave the space, they exist only there. So how can this look today with a crypto security? So again, we have these actors here at the top, and we have the same layers, and now the image seems to become more complex, but it's actually simpler. We have, again, different types of services up here, the banking and the fintech app, perhaps a metaverse app, some sort of industry apps, any sort of app that wants to connect us with assets that we store somewhere. We have this layer of logic and data. Of course, we still have some smaller backends, but a lot of the business logic that I already talked about on the first slide is now perhaps in smart contracts, which is common and can be used by all of these actors. And finally, uh, down in the asset uh, and settlement layer, you can see all different kinds of layers that all have their digital representation such that we can use them across all these different domains, across all these different apps. So this is where we think that the true efficiency gains will come from, just from this, uh, this basically common infrastructure and uh, representing assets in a standardized way. 
Number three, our third important statement would be the way how we interact with assets of any kind, not just financial assets, uh, will change because this accessible representation uh, creates an entirely new user experience. Now, what do we mean with that? Think of buying digital art, an NFT, non-fungible token, some sort of digital representation of an image. Now, what you can do is you can safe keep that in your wallet or, or banking app. You can use that in the metaverse or in games, uh, on, online games, um, Web3 games, wherever. Uh, you can also use it in social media profiles. So perhaps you have some sort of asset that you want to show off with on your social media account. But also uh, use it in some sort of digital frame. And finally, you could use it as collateral in a DeFi uh, protocol out there. And now if you connect all the dots here, you can see that this is not limited to some digital art. You can also use any sort of security that you have in your wallet in all these kinds of ways. For instance, here as a collateral uh, or being at equity or of anything, if you want to show it in your social media profile that you support that firm, then you could. So this accessible representation, this is something that will truly change how we interact with digital assets in the future. Number four, um, securities receive more value um, because they become what we want to call here asset applications. So you've seen before how uh, they should be standardized and how they need to uh, integrate well and how you have common infrastructure. But what do we mean with asset applications? And that's quite simple. Um, you can think of an asset having some sort of base value um, that we all know today, perhaps it's equity, perhaps it's uh, gold, whatever. But by becoming digital, this sort of asset can receive additional value from additional functionality. So it is no longer just a um, boring asset. It becomes an asset with functionality, with functions that you can call from an app. And here are just some examples. Again, voting, for instance, uh, which we know from equity shares already today. But uh, there's, there's way more examples out there. So you can make your asset more valuable and actually bring it to an entirely new form. We actually um, create some sort of user interaction as the issuer. So being the issuer does no longer mean I just want to make money or get money or receive money for something. It means you can create an application that you share with your investors. Right, and this is where I hand over to Marcus. I took the first four, you take the second four. Thank you very much. So right, that's what you Thanks, mean. Mark. So let's continue. And now the question is like all the nice things Mark mentioned we have to implement at some point. So, I mean, there, there, there's this like a really nice law which doesn't give us much help. So we have to do something. So the first thing is like, where to build it. So, and uh, so state number five says, okay, blockchain, uh, public blockchains uh, had crypto securities to unfold their true potential. Something Mark already mentioned, but what does it actually mean? So, um, essentially you have like two options if you want to go for um, blockchains. You can go on a public blockchain like uh, Ethereum or something alike, or you can go on a private blockchain. So if you're on a public site, um, you have some kind of drawbacks you have to tackle with. So you have much less control because like the protocol is just developing and it's developed by a community and you just can't tell the community what they should do so that they go with the flow, I would say. So you lose some kind of control. If you go for a private um, on the other side, um, you have much more control because it's something you built by yourself. So, so you have to decide uh, if you really need this kind of control. So now going for the innovation side here, um, or for the ecosystem, is also what Mark uh, showed in his last slides. Um, on a public blockchain, you're not alone. So if you have a crypto securities, there's a lot of stuff around, and uh, there's like a DeFi protocols, and you can interact with that. So you can leverage this kind of uh, innovation. On the private side, uh, on, the, on the other hand, okay, it really depends what's going into the private network. You know, there's, there's a gatekeeper. So there's not enough, there's maybe innovation happening, but maybe not too much. So on the, pub, on the public side, uh, you can also access new kind of customers, you know, so maybe some crypto nerds, um, but there's also more like also retail people on it, so you have access to it. And additionally, you also have international reach. Uh, on the private side, it's getting complicated because like it's just a private network, you have a gatekeeper, so it's really hard to, to reach a kind of critical uh, mass until it makes sense. But what's nice, you have kind of enterprise readiness, you know, you have privacy, but uh, it doesn't sound, I mean, it sounds like, okay, it's nice, but uh, you can probably have it also on the public side, but I come later to that. It's a little bit more complicated because you have used completely different kind of technologies, but it's possible. Um, 
on the side of like costs, what is already important is like on the public side, you don't need to build anything. I mean, there's already the public network. It's like, okay, there's already the cloud, just use it. Uh, but on the private side, you have to build uh, your infrastructure. So it's really costly and I can tell you because I have some developer experience um, and you need roughly like 30% of your, say, of your time um, doing DevOps. So you have to build the infrastructure, you have to go on the cloud, you have to run your nodes. I've done that in the past, it's a really lot of fun. Um, so I prefer sometimes the, the public side. But when the client wants the, the private side, I also do it. Um, the other thing is um, on the public side, you have to pay somebody, but there's no organization behind, there's no SLA, so you have to pay with cryptocurrencies. That's really nice. So, and you know they have a lot of volatility, so it's a kind of pain, but it's solvable. We'll come later to that. Uh, on the private side, okay, you build the whole stuff, you control it, uh, and you have everything you need. So it's really it's it's it's, it's, it's a hard decision. So what's what's I mean, it really depends on your strategy. Um, if you go for innovation, I think better go for public. If you want to go for like only for cost savings and digitizing things, you can go private. Or you can go both. So let's continue. So how to tackle all these issues I just mentioned. So if you go on the public side, um, uh, there's a lot of pain you have to overcome, but it's solvable. I mean, I have done that. I think Mark too. <laughs> So one thing is a, is a necessity for, for cryptocurrencies because you have to pay for transactions and uh, you have to say on Ethereum you have to pay gas fees for all the transactions you have with your uh, cryptocurrencies, oh, I'm sorry, with your, with your crypto securities. And what you can do is you can, you can integrate a broker but you're getting maybe some cryptos on, on, on your balance sheet or maybe you work with a gas, uh, pro, uh, gas fee provider. Um, you have the problem maybe of scaling and transaction costs. Um, and this is also something uh, where the community have thought about it. So you have this kind of L1 uh, solutions, so or layer one solutions, and you have uh, la layer two solutions is more where you're looking into scalability and have really kind of scalable solutions. Or you can use, uh, say, dedicated blockchains which really focus uh, on scalability like uh, Solana. But if you want to go for Ethereum, there's definitely some L2 solutions on the market, so you can, you can solve that. If you're looking for privacy, this is really the interesting topic because like um, privacy means uh, or when you're on a public blockchain, you see all the transactions. And maybe there's some addresses, you see for, there's a transaction from address A to B, and maybe it doesn't take long time to figure out, okay, um, a, say Siemens is behind A, so you know a lot of about their portfolio, and they probably don't want to do, uh, want, uh, want that. So, um, you have to tackle this issue somehow, and there's a lot of um, ideas uh, and, say, solutions at hand. Um, so you can, you can use for, like, you're changing your addresses continuously, you can go for zero knowledge token, you can use CK SNARKs. So there's a lot of new technology, but it's completely different, actually, what you're used from, say, from the private world, because privacy in a data silo is easy, because it's a silo, you just build a fence around, and you're happy. If you're public and you have data public, um, you should, uh, you should look more into uh, cryptography, you have to encrypt things, uh, you have to do zero knowledge proofs. So it's a little bit more tricky, but it's nothing um, what can't be done actually, but you have to invest a little bit more, more time. Um, so the next thing is like protocol issues. That's really funny, um, because like if you're on a public blockchain, there's nobody you can call. So there's no SLA or anything like that. Um, so what to do is that? So, I know everybody needs maybe a, like business continuity management, BCM. So how to do that here? It's a little more tricky because like nobody is telling you, okay, hey, we will switch off the network. <laughs> Fine, nice. <laughs> so you have to figure it out by yourself on how to do that. I mean, this is, this is tricky because like there's a community behind. So you have to somehow monitor the community with any kind of social analytics tools, uh, measuring the sentiment or seeing, okay, hey, something went in the wrong direction and taking your mitigation measures. So your BCM is getting a little more different what you probably used to, but, but you have to do that, unfortunately. But it's a lot of fun. Um, and the other thing is like, um, when you speak um, about a network, you pay somebody. So who are you paying actually? I have no idea. So because like uh, a decentralized network means essentially it's a bunch of, of nodes which come d uh, up and down and so they're operating for you and you pay them somehow. So maybe there are some nodes in some countries or uh, with some entities you just don't want. So 
there's nothing you can do about it actually. This is something like um, what you have to accept and um, it would be maybe nice if the, uh, say, the regulator has a stance, a stance to that uh, because it's, it's really complicated uh, and it's, it's a kind of new entity say from a heuristic point of view, it's probably like some, more like an algorithm something. It's not like a legal or entity or something like that. So uh, this is really a kind of tricky part. Uh, you have to think about it. But I'm not a lawyer, unfortunately. Um, so fact number seven, as I told you, um, we are, as a company, also building stuff because we're consultants. And uh, actually, we have done a kind of POC uh, on the public blockchain, on Ethereum. And we have looked into specific uh, issues here because, um, I mean, you, you can easily build something, you know, you can build an ERC20 token, say it's the bond, uh, build some kind of nice UI and say, okay, you're ready. Uh, that's not the case um, because you have to think also from a security perspective because like, um, say, a crypto registrar is something like um, a super administrator. And if you have access to its private keys, um, you can do a lot of monkey business uh, on the public blockchain where with crypto securities and they have high volumes and you probably wouldn't do that. And uh, so there's also like certain attacks. You can, you, can, you can try to steal cash flows in the future. So you don't need to actually own the bond because you can't, I mean, you can't steal the bond because it can be rolled back, but you can steal maybe cash flows in the future. So it means from the registry point of view, we have to really look into, uh, into security and uh, for that purpose, we have worked uh, with um, Metaco. It's a Swiss company, so they're building normally a really nice signing solution for the custody case. And we spoke with them that look into this kind of case. And we did it together, and we actually um, wrote a really nice POC. And if you have interest, uh, we can show you outside in our booth. But there's also, I think, a webinar coming up with us, uh, I think, end of uh, April. So we have also like a QR code where you can go to the website and register for that. So fact number eight, you can work with DeFi. <laughs> so uh, um, if you want to really uh, get into the space, uh, we can help, so, help you. Um, we are a consultancy with roughly uh, a thousand employees. Most of them have a, a background in uh, physics like myself. I don't know, Mark, but you too. So, but also I have a background in mathematics and Chinese. So, and yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can help you with all these things like from um, Building the, or uh, say, conceptualizing the business model, building like the uh, uh, the IT inter uh, IT architecture, and even programming the whole stuff. And um, so, I will get to our say last slide. I will jump out a little bit, and let's get uh, back to, uh, to uh, the summary. Just to wrap it up, so we presented you uh, eight points. So the eight, um, the first point was like. Uh, the Crypto Securities Act is really kind of groundbreaking because it allows you to have peer-to-peer -peer kind of trans uh, transfers. And if you build a solution and you don't achieve that, I would say um, it's maybe not the best direction because the moment where you have to interact with a um, crypto security registrar for a transfer, you kind of, in my view, into, into trouble because like the scalability is not so nice if a lot of stuff happening on a secondary market and uh, the, the, the registrar get all these kind of uh, traffic. The second, the second thing was efficiency gain. Um, they don't come just uh, from digitizing things, but mainly um, from I'm getting bad looks here. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they're coming from breaking, uh, breaking up silos. The other thing was about like the, uh, um, the representation level you have, because like if you have a crypto uh, security on a public blockchain, uh, you can change user experience, like you can use your, say, a picture frame and show your crypto security uh, in your, uh, say, it in, your, in your home. The other thing is also like, if you're on a public blockchain, you have all these kind of DeFi ecosystem around and you can integrate with, with that. If you like, go for, say, ERT20 or a ERC1400 tokens as, as like your base layer or a base interface, you can integrate, say, with SushiSwap if you want. But you, you have to want to. <laughs> Um, so the next thing is like uh, public blockchains can really say unfold the potential, but as I mentioned, uh, there are some issues, but they can be uh, tackled. And last, last but not least, um, we, you can actually really build um, a crypto security registrar on the public blockchain, and we can show you. And if you only want to go into the space, you can also work with us. Thanks.